One of the major breakthroughs I had as a painter was when I realized I wasn't just a painter, I was an artist. And by artist, I mean to say that it wasn't enough to just make art. I wanted to tell a story with my work and communicate more than what I saw with my eyes. Like most young painters, I was drawn to the pantheon of masters who were able to use light, color, and technique to capture the stunning portraits of their day. I had always drawn portraits as a kid, but I quickly understood that these artists were on another level. They had a bigger vocabulary than I, and so I embarked on a journey to teach myself their language. But over time, something began to change. I started to lose interest in the painters that I once idolized and found myself being attracted to new artists whose work sought out the psychological, the atmospheric, the visceral, and the expressionistic side of humanity. I was now connecting with artists whose portraits were an experience and not just a documentation. So I rejected the work I was doing, trying to unlearn what I knew about painting and portraiture. Experimenting with new techniques and mediums began to open up my mind and all the new possibilities I could achieve. But I hadn't found my voice just yet. It would take a bad breakup and hitting the age of 39 before the confluence of everything I had learned and experienced finally came together. Overnight, I became more than a painter. And where I once only used a single instrument to make art, I now had a whole orchestra of instruments to communicate the symphony in my head. With my piece Esperanza, I solicited stories from strangers to inspire a portrait. I was moved by the story of Cassandra, a woman who regretted losing the chance to ask her grandmother questions about life before eventually losing her to Alzheimer's disease. My idea for the painting was that I wanted to dissect it like a puzzle and mount the individual pieces onto wood blocks. In order for me to achieve this, I would need to paint the work on a thin piece of paper. The original reference photo of Esperanza was in black and white, but I knew I wanted to paint her in color. There was a certain Aang-like softness to her face, so I chose to use the old master technique of glazing to enhance that look. Glazing is a technique that masters like Vermeer or Bouguereau use to achieve a glow within a painting. By using thin transparent layers of paint, the color would modify the appearance of the underlying paint layer. This is traditionally done by starting in a monochromatic gray underpainting. You then add thin layers of color until you bring out the desired tone. I now had to cut the painting. Although it took me a while to achieve the courage, in recent years I have become more comfortable with the idea that I could deconstruct a piece of my work with the confidence that I could turn it into something new. I then began to glue the pieces of the painting to the wood blocks I had pre-cut and painted white. So why the wood blocks? For me, these blocks represented the many facets of us as human beings. Our self-image, our consciousness, our memories, and our beliefs. A city of blocks created by the pieces of us, growing, stunted, and receding at different levels. It was important to have Cassandra give her input on the words for the video, but I also wanted her to narrate it as well, giving her a chance to ask her grandmother the questions out loud, as though she was right there. I then had Cassandra arrange the painted blocks of her grandmother like a puzzle trying to put back together the grandmother she once remembered while sorting through her own regrets. The end result shows a face that is familiar yet not, like when you see a flipped image of yourself in the mirror. You know it's you, but it just seems different. A surreal image that distorts with the slightest angle shift. The final piece revealing the bits of Esperanza that are fading away into the white void and lost forever. Picasso once asked, are we to paint what's on the face, what's inside the face, or what's behind it? As a young painter, I would have said the face, of course, but as an artist, I say all three. <laughs>